So the first part of Chapter 8 was just building our skill base on how to factor. We learned how to factor just the GCF out of things. We learned how to factor by grouping. And then we also learned how to factor trinomials, both with something in front of the x squared term and then without something in front of the x squared term. So what we're going to do in this section is try to notice some special patterns that can save us some time when we're factoring, if we can recognize them. The awesome thing about this is if we don't recognize them, we could always factor any of the methods that I just mentioned, and we would still end up with the same right answer. So right now, what I would like you to do is pause the video and factor A, B, C, and D. A and B should be the easy ones where you're just looking for two numbers that add to make the number in the middle and multiply to make the number on the end. C and D, you're either going to have to use the table, like box method, or you're going to have to factor by grouping to figure out your factors. So go ahead and pause the video, factor all those, and then when you're done, we'll notice any patterns that might have arise. So this is what I got. For the very first one, I ended up with x plus 1 times x plus 1. Since they're the same exact thing, we could also write this as x plus 1 squared. And then the next one, same thing. I ended up with x minus 7 times x minus 7. I could also write that as x minus 7 all squared. And guess what? We can do that for the next two. 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3 is really 2x plus 3 all squared. And the same thing for the last one. This can really be written as 5x minus 2 all squared. So hopefully you got all of those correct. And now we can notice our patterns. So think back to when we multiplied stuff out. If I had something that looked like a plus b all squared, first thing we would do is rewrite a plus b times a plus b. And then we would double distribute. And when you ended up double distributing, you got this right here. Now I know this looks pretty confusing, but think about what we do when we double distribute. I'd multiply a times a. Well, there's my a squared. And then I'd do a times b, and then b times a. So that's why we end up with two a times b's, because we're multiplying the first and the last term together twice. And then finally we would end up doing b times b, which would give us this b squared on the end. So once you think about what's going on, that makes sense. The first term in our trinomial is the first term squared, a, a squared. The last term in our trinomial is our last term squared, b, b squared. And then to get the one in the middle, you multiply a times b and times it by 2 because you're going to do it twice. If you notice, that was a plus b squared. There's one very similar for a minus b squared, and it follows the exact same rules. The first term in our product is a times a because we have to do double distribute. So that's where that comes from. And then the last term is negative b times negative b, which ends us with positive b squared. And then because when we double distribute, we're going to end up multiplying the first term and the last term together twice. a times b times 2 will give us this term in the middle. And if we go back to all of these, we can notice that pattern. Oops. We can notice that pattern backwards. So take a look at the first one, x plus 1 all squared. We got to square the first term, x squared, square the last term, so 1 squared. And then to get the term in the middle, we multiply x times 1, and then we multiply it by 2, or we get 2x. We can do the same thing with the x minus 7. It has a negative sign, but the steps are still the same. If we were to multiply this out, we could do x times x, or x squared. Negative 7 times negative 7 would give us positive 49. And then to get my term in the middle, you multiply negative 7 times x times 2. So we end up with negative 14x, which is exactly what we started with. And this works for the other two, but I'll save you the trouble of going through. But you can prove it to yourself. 
this is a relationship that you should memorize. And remember, if you don't memorize it or can't memorize it, it's not the end of the world because we could still factor it the old school way. So let's take a look at our new examples. This first one is one that we can do, hopefully with our eyes closed. But the second one has X's and Y's in it. So these patterns are going to come in really handy. So the very first one, X squared plus 10X plus 25. So the first thing I know is that this first term is a perfect square. I can get X squared by doing X squared, or X times X. And then I also notice that 25 is a perfect square. To get 25, all I have to do is square 5. And then I double check before I do this perfect square pattern thing that if I multiply x times 5 times 2, that I get the term in the middle. And x times 5 times 2 is definitely 10x. So that tells me without doing any diamond, without doing any um, factoring by grouping, I know that this is x plus 5 all squared. And then we would also get that if we did it the way that we already know how to do. So from now on, when you have a trinomial, Look for trinomials with perfect squares in the first position and in the last position. And then you have to double check to see if the center term is 2 times the product of the square roots of the first and the last terms. This super confusing, but it's just this step that I did down here, where I took the x part and the 5 part, multiplied them together, x times 5, and then multiplied it by 2 and double checked that that was 10. So these are called perfect square trinomials because you end up with something squared. And think back to the Frog's book. If we were going to draw that, it would end up being a perfect square. You would have x plus 5, x plus 5, and it would end up a nice pretty square. So now let's try this next one that's a little different. So again, first thing you should notice is it's a trinomial. So look at your first term. Is it a perfect square? Could I square something and get 16x squared? We can. If I square 4, I end up with 16. But if I square x, I get x squared. And then do the same thing for the last term. Is 9y squared a perfect square? Well, if I square 3, I get 9. And if I square y, I end up with y squared. So now that we have the first and the last term, what we need to double check is that that term in the middle comes from those two side terms. So we want to multiply these guys together, 4x times 3y, times 2, and check to see that it's equal to negative 24x times y. 4 times 3 gives me 12. Multiply it by 2, I end up with 24 x times y gives me xy. 24xy and negative 24xy are not the same thing. So in this case, I can't use my perfect square factoring. So we're going to say not factorable. Since this idea is still new, let's pretend for a second that what they had given us was 16x squared plus 24xy plus 9y squared. We already broke down the first and the last terms. We know we get 4x squared to give us 16x squared. And then 3y all squared gives us this. And we double checked and our middle two things are the same then what we would want to write as our factors is the 4x and the 3y. So we have 4x plus 3y, because it's positive, all squared would be the factor of that. So like the one before, if it doesn't match up, even if it's close, this negative sign made it not match up, it's not factorable, but 
If it does match up, then you can take the two things that you found, and those will be your factors, your A and your B. All right, one more pattern to notice. And this is when the middle term crosses off. So think back to when we double distributed. If you have the same thing, only opposite signs, your middle terms end up crossing off. So we would do a times a or a squared, then a times positive b to give me a b, and then we would do negative b times a to give me negative a b, and then finally negative b times b gives me negative b squared. And when we first learned this stuff, we just cross this off and you get a squared minus b squared. So again, if you notice, a difference, and it has to be subtraction, of two squares, a squared and b squared, without doing as much work as we would normally do, we can figure out what the factors are. So the very first example is 100x squared minus 36. So the first thing I notice is there's only two terms. It's not a trinomial. And then I also notice that 136 are perfect squares. So what could I square to give me 100x squared? Well, I'd need 10 to get the 100, and then x to get x squared. And because it's 36, square 6 to give me that number. And remember, it has to be negative. If this isn't negative up here, that means that your terms didn't cross off. So it must be negative. If not, can't do this. So then that 10x and the 6 I know are my a and my b. I know one factor has to have 10x plus 6 and the other factor has to have 10x minus 6 in it so that those middle terms cross off. And remember you can always double check these by multiplying it together and seeing if you end up with what you start with. So let's do the next one together. I have 81c squared minus 4d squared. So again, first thing I notice, only two terms. This can only happen when there's two terms. And it's a difference of two terms. So there's subtraction in the middle. And then I also recognize that 81 and 4 are perfect square numbers. So I ask myself, what could I square to get 81c squared? I have to have a 9 and a c. And then for 4d squared, I have to have a 2 and a d. So what I just found there are my a and my b, my two terms that I'm going to use to make my binomials. And remember, we have to have one positive, so 9c plus 2d, and then one negative, so 9c minus 2d, in order for those middle terms to cross off. If you want to try the third one, go ahead and pause the video, and I'll put the answer up, and then we are done with our notes. Apparently it kept rolling. There's the answer. 5m squared minus 3n times 5m squared plus 3n. So the whole m to the fourth right here is really m squared all squared. If you have any questions about this stuff, make sure you mark it down and we will go over it tomorrow in class.